What's up everybody, it's me Sergio with Mobility Direct and today I'm going to teach you how to not shock yourself when changing the batteries on your mobility scooter. Whoa! What I have here is a Pride Victory Mobility Scooter. This thing has been around for decades. It's a workhorse. I love working on it. We have tons of videos on it. If you want to learn more about it, check out our in-depth review videos and all of our other DIY videos. I'll put the links in the description below. To expose the batteries, you just gotta pop the seat off, just lift straight up on the seat, pop the battery cover off, pick it straight up, and here are your batteries. It has two 12 volt batteries. Now, by the way, folks, before I go too far into things, if you need a mobility scooter parts, or if you just wanna learn more about our latest products, get discount codes, claim a copy of our free product catalog. It has a ton of awesome information in here. And if you want a copy, just click on the top right-hand corner of the screen. It's gonna take you to a form that you fill out. You put your address in, you're seeing it on the screen now. Once you fill out that form, it'll show up in your mailbox within one to two weeks tops. Keep in mind, folks, we do have a few stores. So if you wanna come on by, test drive any of our products, visit us, ask us questions, come on by. We'd love to earn your business. We have a non-commissioned sales team. All right, so check this out. These are the two batteries. They're 12 volt batteries. Most all mobility scooters run on two 12 volt batteries. So combined, you got 24 volts. 24 volts is not really enough to do damage, but you can create a little spark and it might hurt a little bit. So I'm gonna teach you how to avoid getting shocked, show you what happens if you do get shocked. Hopefully I'll not be injured in the making of this video, but let's see. Hey, hey honey, how's it going? We're okay. Good, I just wanna check uh, and let you know I'm about to shock myself for a YouTube tutorial video. Um, is our life insurance up to date? No. No. Okay, cancel the video, stop recording. All right, I'll be home soon, love you. Love you, bye. Bye. Well, she's not gonna be happy. All right, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's show what we got here. We've got these little silicone covers for the terminals to prevent rust and corrosion. We wanna slide those back a little bit to really expose those contacts on the batteries because I'm gonna show you pretty much the only possible way you could ever get shocked by these two batteries, which are wired in series to provide 24 volts to the controller, right? It is a 24 volt motor. It needs 24 volts. We have tons of videos on battery troubleshooting. If your batteries are dead and you don't know if they're dead, you can test them with a multimeter. It's pretty easy to do that. Whoa, where'd that come from? A multimeter. So yeah, if you have one of these, you just wanna go ahead and put it on the right setting. If you have a simple voltmeter, great. If you have a multimeter, you wanna put it at 200 volts. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch one negative, one positive, show you you've got 12 volts. Now, 12 volts is the minimum voltage required. So if you're checking your batteries and you only have 12 volts and you've been charging it all night, chances are the batteries are no good. When you fully charge a 12 volt battery, you should have closer to 13, even 13.4 volts as a fully charged 12 volt battery. Each one should read that. So I'm gonna test the second one here. I'm touching the probes red to red, black to black and they're both 12.8, which brings me to my next point. They should both be balanced, meaning one shouldn't be 12 and the other one 12.8 or 13. If that's the case, your batteries aren't balanced. They should both read about the same voltage. So the fact that they're both 12.8 means they're great. Now, the other thing you can do is run a load test. And yes, you can take your scooter to a battery shop and they can do a proper load test, but you really don't need to do that. What I do to do a load test is I take my positive and negative, I plug it into the two out of the three holes on the charging port, right? So you got a three pin charging port for most scooters. These three pin universal charging ports work the same. You can put one of your probes, doesn't matter, red or black, into the one on the left, another one, onto the one on the left or the right. Either way, you get the point, avoid the middle one. Here you've got a standing voltage of about 25.7 volts. That's good. The minimum amount of voltage that the scooter requires to operate is 24 volts. Anything lower than that, it's not gonna perform as intended. It might not even turn on. So let's turn this thing on. Now I'm gonna turn it on and with the voltmeter connected to the charging port, give it some throttle. Now I'm gonna stand on the scooter to put a load on the scooter. You want it to be operating with some sort of capacity, some sort of load, and I'm gonna hit throttle. Now as I go, you're gonna keep an eye on the voltage. You see how it's dropping just a little bit? 25.3, that's good. Even when I let go, it's at 25.4. So while it's moving and under a load, the voltage is not dropping. That's good, that's a good sign. 
A bad sign would be if you're operating the load test and your voltage drops to say below 25 or even close to 24. That means your batteries aren't able to retain that voltage while under load. And over time, that's what happens. Give it a year and a half, two years, your batteries are gonna start dropping under load pretty quickly. In about two years, two and a half, maybe three years, they're not gonna hold a charge for more than half a block. And that's when you know it's time to change the batteries. Now I recommend changing your batteries every two years, just like a car, especially in warmer states. It's just a necessary thing to do. Part of maintenance, you wanna change your batteries every two years, especially if you use your scooter every single day. And charging it regularly is gonna make your batteries last a full two, possibly even three years, depending on how much you use it and how aggressive the terrain is that you're using it on how much weight you're putting on it versus the maximum load, things like that impact the battery life. Now again, folks, we have tons of videos showing you how to troubleshoot batteries, replace batteries for basically every single model. I'm gonna show you basically what it's like to change the batteries on this Victory scooter. The process is pretty much the same for most scooters. And along the way, I'm gonna teach you how to avoid getting zapped. All right, so two 12 volt batteries. Now, if you touch the positive and the negative, you can get shot. I'm just kidding. You're not going to get shocked. You can touch the positive and the negative on a 12 volt battery, just like you can on a AAA or AA battery and nothing's going to happen. Okay. But if you were to touch one red on one battery and one black on the other, you will not get shocked either. It's okay, folks. Okay. Really, you can't get shocked with two 12 volt batteries. The only way I've ever heard of anybody getting shocked with two 12 volt batteries is if they have some sort of metal screwdriver that's like 18 inches long that hits the positive and the negative on two separate batteries. And it's not really like a huge shock. It's, it's a little bit of a spark, if you will. It might burn a little, but you know, it's hard to do that. I mean, I don't really know why you would have a long metal piece of object that touches this red terminal and this black one, okay? You pretty much have to try to get shocked to do that. Let's do that. <laughs> All right, folks, so I have intentionally repositioned the batteries out of the cradles to put the positive and the negative closer to one another. And now I'm gonna touch it with this screwdriver. Hopefully I don't die. Let's see what happens. Whoa! That was awesome! So as you can see, folks, that can create a spark. And you shouldn't do that. It was very scary. Even my cameraman, give me the camera is freaked out right now. Jake, I know you're freaked out. It's okay, we survived. So folks, if you wanna know, can you get shocked? Yeah, you probably can. And, and honestly, I'm a little surprised. I've never done this before. My business partner, Andrew, told me, yes, you can get shocked, but I was not expecting that type of spark. <laughs> Whoa! It's dangerous. We're just crazy about getting views on YouTube. This is the type of thing we do. We put our life on the line, folks, for you. So I hope you're appreciating this video, but getting back to education and less debauchery, uh, let's change the batteries now, okay? Don't do what I just did. That's literally the only way you could possibly get shocked. Look at this screwdriver. This is a huge, heavy-duty screwdriver. It's almost melted. <laughs> All right, so let's actually change the battery. That was awesome. Look at this thing. It literally like melted the terminal. I hope the customer doesn't mind. I'm just, I'm just kidding, folks. This is not a customer scooter. This is a, just a beat up scooter that we've had for a long time for demo purposes. We're not selling it, okay? Relax, okay? You can beat me up in the comments, but seriously, let's go ahead and change the batteries now. So I'm gonna pull this piece of molted metal off first. And basically all you need to do to change the batteries on this unit, you've got two wire harnesses that just pop out. There's no wrong way to plug them in. You can do, you can mix these two connectors up. It doesn't matter. They're both two 12 volt batteries that need to make contact to these two receiving ends. They're color coded. There's literally no wrong way to plug them in. So we're going to just remove them first. So we have some room to work with and I'm actually going to bring these two up to my bench. Here's my bench. Now, I'm gonna take the time to tell you about this chart up here. Lithium versus SLA. Basically, if you wanna upgrade your scooter to get double the range and to reduce the weight of your batteries by 50% most of the time, we have a chart, you can call our parts department. It's totally worth it. Lithium batteries come with an 11 year warranty and they're expected to last like triple the amount of time that a lead acid battery is. And they're just, these are super heavy. Okay, so the weight, 
Uh, the difference in weight here between a 35 and a 46, which is what you're looking at here at 35, 5 point, I'm sorry, 21.6 pounds for the sealed lead acid, about 10 and a half pounds for the lithium equivalent. You're gonna save a lot of weight. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. We have tons of videos on that, so check them out in the description, I'll put the links. All right, now depending on the battery type you have, you may need a screwdriver. I'm going to use a socket and, and a pair of pliers because these terminals are melted and I don't think the socket's going to fit on one side. But basically what you just need to do is remove the positive ring from the positive terminal and remove the negative ring from the negative terminal on both batteries. So let's do that. All right, once they're loose enough, I like to just use my fingers here and completely remove the bolt from the nut. Now you're gonna have a washer on each side of the terminal and a locking nut in most cases to keep everything nice and snug. Make sure you don't lose those, even though when you're buying replacement batteries, they come with a replacement set of nuts, bolts, washers, and locking nuts. So we can see the ring here is exposed. That is what the bolt goes through. So it's gonna go through the hole on the terminal, then go through the hole on the wire harness loop. Same thing on the negative. So let's go ahead and rinse and repeat. And you're going to want to do this on both batteries. There we go. And we're just going to do that for both batteries. I'm not actually going to replace the batteries here. These batteries are fine. I tested them even after we uh, nearly burnt down the shop and uh, they're working fine. But you shouldn't do that because it's not smart. I can't reiterate that enough. All right. So here we go. First wire harness is removed and if you can guess, the next step would be to reattach this wire harness to the new battery. Okay, so pretend this is a brand new battery that doesn't look like it's been melted. The main thing to remember, folks, is that the red loop needs to go on the red terminal. The black wire loop needs to go on the negative, which is black. So positive is red, negative is black. Should be common sense. But for those of you who are first timers, I do need to explain that. It is important. Otherwise, your scooter won't work. So let's go ahead and put that bolt through. Now you are gonna to wanna to keep the washer on when putting the bolt through. And then on the back side, what you wanna do is also put on a washer and then put on the locking nut, which looks like this. And then put on the nut. So again, you have bolt, washer, terminal, loop from the wire harness, washer, locking nut, and then nut. And then nut. Now I'm gonna tighten it with my fingers and first, and then go back with my tools and snug it all up. Okay, we're gonna go here. Bolt, washer, terminal, loop, washer, locking nut, nut. And while I'm doing this, folks, I do wanna take the time to tell you that we don't just make DIY videos. We have torture test videos, comparison videos, in-depth product reviews. We don't just tell you what we like about the products, we tell you what we don't like about them. We're one of the few YouTubers out there that review products in an honest way without any biases involved. I also wanna tell you that part of every sale goes towards funding our community donation program. Friend. Sorry for my friend. Hey, no problem, man. Enjoy it, Thank all right? God loves you. We're on a mission to give back to the disabled community, folks. We have fun making entertaining videos, but we also make giveaway videos where you can see the reaction from people that get free mobility scooters that never expected it. A lot of these folks are homeless or they're struggling to get around with a manual wheelchair that's like broken down or a walker or a cane. They're just struggling. They can't afford a scooter. We show up, we surprise them with a brand new mobility scooter and it's amazing. If you want to see those videos, I'm going to put a link to the video playlist of our giveaway winners. But if you want to be a part of that movement, consider shopping at Mobility Direct or telling someone you know about Mobility Direct. Together, we can make a difference, one mobility device at a time. I also want to tell you that if you have any questions along the way that I'm not answering, leave them in the comment section. I'll personally respond to them within one business day. All right, folks, so assuming you've changed the batteries, you've got two new batteries and the wire harnesses are connected the right way, you've got red going to red, black going to black, Make sure you put your silicone covers on, protecting the terminals. That's gonna prevent corrosion, rust, oxidation. You wanna keep those dry, that's what those silicone covers are for, and to prevent some crazy person from trying to touch a screwdriver on the negative and positive and creating a, a shock and creating a, a big 
explosion and creating a mini explosion like I did, right? Shh, don't try that. All right, so let's go ahead and put these batteries back on and we're pretty much done. Now keep in mind, folks, look behind me. We're not just an online dealer, okay? We have brick and mortar stores. So if you wanna come by, test drive any one of our products, we have a non-commissioned sales team. They're not pushy. They're gonna recommend a product that's the right fit for your needs, most importantly, your budget, unlike our competitors. So we'd love to have you stop by anytime. Check out the hours and locations on our website. There is a locations link at the top of the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the two connectors. Again, we've got two 12 volt batteries. We gotta plug both of them in to give the controller 24 volts. All right, so again, there's no wrong way to do it. I could plug this one in here or here. Doesn't matter, it just needs two 12 volt batteries. All right, so we've got the two connectors in. You wanna take your strap, which is really just there to keep everything from wobbling around, shaking around too much, and go over the top of the wires to kind of hold down the wires too. Now you don't really wanna have these too sandwiched in too close to one another, otherwise your battery cover will have a hard time going on. All right, so here's the battery cover. You can see on the back part, there's two pieces of Velcro, and then here on the back part of the scooter here, there's two pieces of matching Velcro strips. You're gonna want to make contact there, but first you wanna get these two teeth at the bottom part of the cover on the front side. There's also a little notch for the circuit breaker reset button. If your scooter doesn't ever power on, you wanna to check to see if that button is popped out, push it back in. It's like resetting the tripped breaker on your breaker panel at home in the garage. Like if your house gets struck by lightning, sometimes it trips the breaker. Scooter has the same thing. You could trip a breaker, push that button to reset it, and you might actually fix your scooter without calling a technician. We have another video on that, by the way. So I am gonna put the teeth in first, kind of tilt the battery box forward and have those teeth line up here and have the circuit uh, breaker reset button kind of line up with the groove here. Then once it's lined in, I'm gonna push it all the way down. You saw it sunk in a little bit. Now we're gonna make sure that the Velcro strips make contact here. The wires are not in the way and that's it. There's really nothing to it. There's no clicking sound or anything. It just rests right into place. All right, now for the seat, there is a male connector in the middle of the seat on the bottom. That male connector needs to go right into the seat post. There's no trick to it other than line it up. I like to have it at an angle so I can visualize the male connector falling into the seat post and then I level out the seat. Once I know it's in, I level out the seat. I kind of wiggle it around until it falls into place. You know it's locked in when the seat doesn't spin around. If it spins around, it's not in all the way. These seats have a rotation lever, so it'll lock into position at several different positions. And you want to make sure and test that before you start going out riding your scooter. You don't want the seat to fall off on you, especially if you have a vehicle lift and you put it on the platform and you're driving around hitting speed bumps, the seat can fly off. Well, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. Again, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct. I hope you found this video both entertainment and educational. I hope you found it edutationmental. Until next time, everybody, have a great day.